close your eyes. Picture a prison, the metal bars, concrete floors, and echoing hallways. In your hand is a silver key. That key gives you the power to escape the prison. What would you do with that key? Would you unlock the door and escape, or stay in the cell, frozen, unable to move? Open your eyes. Keep this image in your mind. Now I'm going to rewind to two years ago. I had just moved from New Jersey and was brand new to Florida. The only thing that shocked me more than fitness centers and acai shops being on every block was how easy it was to adjust to Floridian lifestyle. I was able to find new friends. I was performing above average in all of my classes, and for the first time in my life, I felt like I finally belonged somewhere. As the school year continued on, I worked hard to look perfect in the eyes of my peers. I joined 15 different clubs, was elected to student council, and acted in the fall play. On top of all of my extracurriculars, I still managed to have a social life, which boosted my confidence so much that I decided to run for class president. I didn't just get my feet wet; I dove in. That's when a hurricane hit, both literally and figuratively. About a month into the school year, I was suddenly fleeing my new home as Hurricane Irma, a Category Five storm, hit Southeast Florida. Little did I know that my life would soon turn into a hurricane, with sudden gusts of wind destroying everything in its path. That hurricane was Homecoming Week. Following Hurricane Irma, Homecoming rolled in in early October, just two weeks after Irma. I was looking forward to the festivities, the football game, the dance, and the freshman class election, but this week was not fun. This was the week in which my so-called perfect life turned into a living hell. Two events that occurred in the span of five days from each other ultimately led to my downward spiral. The first event of homecoming was the freshman class election, which I lost. While this was disappointing, I still ended up with a position on student council as a class representative. But all I could think about was the fact that I lost the race. The second event that occurred during homecoming week was a direct result of my overconfidence and naivety. I figured that in order to go to the homecoming dance, you would need a date, because in New Jersey, it was a tradition to bring a date. And like every other disastrous story involving a crush, this one begins the same way, with the words, "So I met a girl." I met her while rehearsing for the fall play that year. Our personalities connected like magnets, or at least that's what I thought. We balanced each other out. I was the north end of the magnet, and she was the south. I asked her best friend to put in a good word for me, but sadly, my crush frowned upon the idea of us as a couple. I felt humiliated. My plan to go to the dance with my crush had fallen apart. She knew that I liked her, and began to avoid me. After an exhausting. An embarrassing week. I went to the dance alone. I felt like a moron. My confidence, positivity, and ambition to succeed in Florida was replaced by a feeling of exposure. I felt like a turtle losing its shell. What should have been a laughable experience turned into a traumatic time for me. I couldn't even mention homecoming by name. Other students saw this dance as just that—a dance. I spent months. Replaying this event in my head, over and over and over again, worrying about the past and the future, with my confidence vanishing before my eyes, I would ask, "Will I be rejected and blindsided the same way that I was at homecoming?" I began to ruminate. Psychology Today defines rumination as repetitively going over a thought or problem without completion. The Mental Health Magazine. Also states that the feel that the the mental health magazine also states that the repetition and the feelings of inadequacy raise anxiety, and anxiety interferes with solving the problem. Then depression deepens. For me, this pattern of rumination would rotate between thinking about the past, replaying the events leading up to homecoming and homecoming itself, and thinking about the future. 
questioning my friendships, academic success, college, and even my career. Remember that prison cell I told you to picture? Bring that back into your memory. The prison bars represent the future and the past, keeping you stuck in an everlasting cycle of anxiety and paranoia. The silver key represents the present. Instead of just unlocking my metaphorical prison cell, I stayed, doing what no completely sane person would, would do. I wanted to stay in my hell. My anxiety was still building up inside of me, putting a wall around me. Fast forward six months, six long, tiring months. I became so fed up with my life in Florida and my constant rumination on the past and the future that I was ready to pack my bags and move back to New Jersey. But then, one day, perhaps when I needed it the most, I was approached by Mr. Glick, the Director of Student Life and Experiential Education at St. Andrews, who asked me if I wanted to go on a trip to Thailand. I was hesitant. I took the forms and I walked away. But when I found out that five of my friends were also applying for this trip, my mind changed. Two weeks away from Florida with five of my best friends. That was exactly what I needed. It was my very own tabula rasa, a clean slate. 24 hours, four airports, and one Avengers movie marathon later, we arrive in Thailand. My mind is still attached to the event that happened six months prior. I take a tour of the Grand Palace, where I observe the gold pattern towers and the temple of the Jade Emerald Buddha, the holiest of temples in all of Thailand. I see the backyards of Thai homes as I cruise on a longboat through the Chow Phraya River. I watch a traditional Thai dance performance, but something doesn't feel right. My mind is still spiraling, unable to fully enjoy this once-in-a-lifetime experience. After the performance, my friends and I returned to the hotel, where we began to joke around and reminisce on our freshman year. A few minutes into our conversation, my friend asked me a life-changing question. Why do you care so much about homecoming? I was stunned. I stormed out of the room, sat in the hallway, and cried. Like any other anxiety attack I had experienced after homecoming, I began to question my friendships. I wondered if those five friends on the trip with me were really my friends. I wondered if I would get excluded, left behind, ignored. For the first time since October, I acknowledged that I was in a prison cell with a key right in front of me. I realized that what was important was not what happened yesterday or what would happen tomorrow, but what was happening now. I took that silver key, unlocked the door, and moved out of the prison. As a result of unlocking my metaphorical jail cell, those two weeks in Thailand became an unforgettable experience. Instead of focusing on moments from the past or thoughts about the future, I fully absorbed my experience there. From meeting new friends from around the world to participating in a water fight on the streets of Bangkok, each and every moment of that trip left a lasting impact on me because I was no longer worrying about homecoming. As I look back to my freshman year and what I could have done differently, I think of this quote from another article from Psychology Today. Depression lives in the past, and anxiety lives in the future. Alternately, calmness and peace of mind live in the present. As I dove further into homecoming, both in the past and the future, I not only felt more depressed and regretful, but I also felt more anxious and fearful. Each of us holds the power to use that key to free ourselves from the metaphorical prison of the past and the future. If we spend time analyzing and justifying everything through the lens of the past or the future, then we lose the present. But the present is just that, a present. So rip off the bow, open it up, and enjoy it. Thank you.